God absolutely changes us. The whole point of the gospel is to transform the hearts of humanity. But does that mean God changes who we are? Like, if I'm gay, should I believe for God to make me straight? As a Christian, I know that heart transformation is something we should expect from anyone who claims to know the living God. But as someone who also happens to be gay, I know that God doesn't change who he created us to be at our core. I understand that many Christians interpret some Bible passages to be a condemnation of LGBT plus people. But as someone who was saved from the porn industry, I see those passages as speaking more to my former life in porn than they do to my marriage with my loving husband. I'm Aaron Crowley, author of Bought with a Price, a gay Christian's memoir from Porn Sets to Love, releasing May 22nd, 2021, and available for pre-order through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and most other online bookstores. After I left the porn industry, I sought refuge in the church, only to be told that I needed to repent of my sexual orientation, so I explored this idea in same-sex attraction recovery groups. But whenever I heard the testimonies of ex-gays, it stood out to me that they confessed that they were still attracted to the same sex. They changed their behavior, but their sexual orientation had not changed. This seemed odd to me because whenever I left porn, the Holy Spirit transformed my heart. I now see porn as something unjust and degrading, so I hate it. But what I was hearing from ex-gays was more of a testimony about behavior modification, not heart transformation. On top of that, I saw the bad fruit that comes from trying to change an essential part of a person, such as their sexual orientation. All mental health associations deem ex-gay therapies as dangerous for causing things like depression and even suicide. But the fruit of following Jesus is love, joy, peace, self-control. There is nothing in the Bible against love because love fulfills the word of God. But what about those passages, the so-called clobber passages? Some modern translations translate a certain ancient Greek term to be homosexuals. But look at that word in its context. For example, in 1 Timothy 1.10, it appears between two other ancient Greek terms. The first one refers to prostituted men and women, and the other term refers to sex traffickers and pimps. In that context, it's pretty clear to me that the word in question more likely refers to those who rent prostituted people. This term could be used today to refer to any sex buyers, including those who watch pornography. But it has nothing to do with loving gay couples. For the church to consistently use passages like this to condemn LGBT plus people, it spiritually marries LGBT plus people to sexual exploitation like porn addiction. But when LGBT plus Christians get their minds renewed from what non-affirming Christians have spoken over them, we will be set free from sexual sin. And that is a major goal of my memoir. But why does the Bible have such strong convictions against prostitution? After all, today there are many people fighting for the rights of the sex industry. So are these just archaic writings that have nothing to say for today? Or is there something deeper going on? That's what we'll explore next week. So make sure you stick around by subscribing so you don't miss it. And don't forget to check out Bought With A Price, a gay Christian's memoir from Porn Sets To Love, available right now for pre-order through most online bookstores.